What's up guys, welcome to another super frantic morning time-lapse episode. <laughs> it's not what this episode's about though. I just, I woke up late again. I think I woke up like 6.18. I looked out my window and all of this entire sky everywhere was on fire. Well, it was about to be, I knew it. So I ran up here. I live right over there on that hill, like two miles away. And in the time it took me to get from there to here, I think I missed most of the good color, but I got this pano with the long lens. And I got this time-lapse set up with my RP and my 1635. Didn't have time for filters, didn't have time for even a real tripod. I'm gonna test out my new travel tripod and see how it does. So far, I think this time-lapse is a dud. Luckily, that's not why we're here. So I was checking my phone a little bit ago and I got a question, as I do, from people. This question comes from a guy named Craig. So Craig, thanks for the question. And I do this a lot. You know, you guys ask me a lot of questions and you ask me questions that I don't necessarily think about all the time. And so sometimes I make videos out of them. So if you're new here and you haven't seen what I do, this is usually what I do. I'm out in the field in New Mexico and I bring you guys along and I do tutorials and all kinds of stuff. But this one's gonna be a Q and A. And this question comes from Craig. This is about wildlife photography. So again, if you're new here, I do a lot of wildlife photography. I also do a lot of time-lapsing and landscape and nature photography, streams, do a lot of photography. But today's episode is all about wildlife photography. And Craig asks, he says, I have the 100 to 400 version two on a crop sensor Canon 77D. So the 90D's attractiveness includes the focused joystick, the bigger viewfinder, the battery, the ability to crop more. And then he says, uh, going full frame is a pricey step up for me. And the R6's low 20 megapixel sensor gives me pause. The R5 is way out of my price range. So also he wants to know if I would recommend considering a used 5D Mark IV instead. So that's the question roundabout. Thanks for that, Craig. And the reason why I wanna make a video about that is because I feel like after reading that, I feel like uh, I get a similar question to that a lot. I feel like a lot of people are in that situation. You guys have a super beginner or a cheapo or a you know used older whatever like crop body and you started getting more serious into photography and in Craig's case in wildlife photography and you wanna know what to upgrade to. So here's my quick thoughts on that. It may not be quick, quick is a relative term. Quick in this case means how fast I set this video up, not how long I talk for. <laughs> uh, my talking will be severely limited by food, by hunger today because oh my God, I'm so hungry. I just ran out the door with no tea, no food, no Pop-Tarts, no breakfast. Anyway, so what do I recommend? In that situation, there, there, it's, it's always hard to do recommendation videos, right? Because I don't know any of you guys personally. I don't know your finances. I don't know your skill levels. I don't know your dedication. I don't know anything, you know, about what you're willing to deal with and what you're able to deal with. So I'm gonna give you some advice based on Craig's question and based on the best of my ability and based on my experience with a lot of these cameras. So in my experience, I'm gonna come at this from a quality level and not a, so much as a price level, okay? So if price were the absolute limiting factor in this, then I would probably tell Craig or you guys to get a 90D because I think that would probably be the least expensive and best option. Uh, but since price is not completely the only factor, then I'm gonna look at it from a quality standpoint and assume that you and Craig want to up your photography and you want to get more out of, you know, get the most out of your new investment. Wow, that is looking really bright. I'm gonna see if I can't. Is that better? Now you can start to see it's getting dark, huh? Those clouds are dark. Maybe I'll be able to salvage that and make a long exposure out of this, we'll see. So in my experience, I used to shoot, I shot wildlife with crop bodies for a very long time. I shot with the 7D, the 60D, the 70D, the 80D, uh, the 7D Mark II, 
So I've shot with it all, right? And in my experience as a wildlife photographer and now as a professional photographer, I don't use crop body cameras anymore. And I know that that's a luxury that not everybody has. So with that in mind though, I will say that if you're interested in not just wildlife, but other types of photography, a full frame camera is going to be more beneficial, especially if you can find a full frame camera for around the same price as you know whatever your budget is looking at. And in this case, uh, the 90D versus the 5D Mark IV. I would take the 5D Mark IV personally any day of the week over the 90D for every single type of photography for any situation I'm in. That was my go-to camera for like since the day it came out, since the day the R5 and the R6 came out. I sold it to get the R6 and I do not regret my decision at all. However, that 5D4 was my workhorse. I used it way more than I used my 1DX2, surprisingly and it was great for everything. It was so amazing for wildlife, having that full frame sensor, having that uh, autofocus system, having you know the, the native big EF lenses, it was all incredible. And the fact that the R5 and the R6 are out now and the 5D4 has been out for a really long time, there is a good potential that you can find a 5D Mark IV for a very good price and that thing is an absolute tank. And if I had to go back to it and you know I was forced to use it, I would be, totally fine with that and I would definitely go with that over a 90D even though the 90D is newer and it has that crop factor which for wildlife you're going to get that extra reach for me I've talked about this a lot in other videos the crop factor is like a crutch that a lot of people lean on that I have gotten away from and I don't really need anymore and personally I would rather have the benefits of full frame especially with that high ISO capability that's where the 5D Mark IV is really going to shine and that's where the 90D is really going to suffer you know you start pushing your ISO past 1600 3200 6400 and it's going to start hurting you a lot on that 90D but on that 5D4 that's still totally usable images. And then let's talk about the R6 real quick because Craig brought it up. If the 5D4 and the R6 are in a similar price range for you and you're considering that, I let's take the step up. I would absolutely hands down go with an R6 over the 5D Mark IV any day of the week. And that's because I've had the R6 since the day it came out. I'm filming on it right now. I've been using it forever. I also have the R5. But if the R5 isn't an option for you because of price, I totally understand that. The R6, in my experience, I would say do not worry about the megapixels. And I say that for two reasons. One, I have shot on the 1D series for a very long time, for like six years or something. I've had the 1DX, the 1DX, the 1DC, the 1DX Mark II, and those have been my go-to cameras for a lot of years. The 20 megapixel, on those sensors, see those sensors are unique. With the 20 megapixels, I have never had an issue cropping for wildlife. I've never had an issue cropping for sports. I've never had an issue with cropping for landscapes and I've shot everything on the 1DX Mark II. And the R6, my point is the R6 has the same sensor as the 1DX Mark III, which is incredible. It's an incredible sensor. It can do anything you need it to do. and I, from a professional standpoint, would be totally happy turning in any image that I shot on this R6 to a client or whatever, or showing for you guys or my portfolio. So don't worry just about the megapixels. It's not all about the megapixels. The reason why I would pick an R6 over a 5D Mark IV or the 90D any day of the week, number one reason, autofocus. The, R, the R6 and the R5, they have the same autofocusing system. They are the best thing you've ever seen in your life. They're certainly the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I have, I have been in such elation, such happiness over the past couple months using the R5 and the R6, especially for wildlife. What's up guys, real quick, uh, super short plug. The best way that you guys can show me some love and give me some support if you guys are enjoying my videos is click that like button for me and leave me a comment. Those are by far the best ways to support me and my channel and the best ways to help my videos uh, get more traction in YouTube. And on that note, this video is sponsored by me. 
also. <laughs> so if you guys wanna take your support a little bit further and you really dig what I'm doing and I'm helping you out, which I hope I am, then you can check out my preset packs down below, which I have, I created for me and you guys have been loving them and I use them all the time and, and they'll help give you that little bit of uh, editing boost and um, they're really fun. So check those out, the link's down below. I've also got a wildlife t-shirt and a sky pack. So that stuff's down below too. And then if you really wanna take your support to the next level and you really, really enjoy what I'm doing and you wanna see more of me and get some more info out of me personally, then check out the channel memberships. I've got a link for those down below as well. And there's different levels for different levels of support and different levels of engagement with me. And I'm trying really hard to build that community and I love uh, how it's going so far and all the members that have joined so far. I love you guys. So if you're already a member, huge thanks to you. And if you wanna see more cool stuff like BTS and extra videos and editing stuff and Q and A's and all kinds of stuff like that, check out the memberships down below. All right, that's my sponsor plug. Huge shout out to all you guys who are still here and just watching the videos. Hit that like button for me. It really does make the biggest difference. All right, back to regular Brent. When you get that animal autofocus, the eye detect set up properly and you have the dual button back focusing and all this stuff and you really get those settings tweaked in your R6 and your R5, you are going to be an absolute wildlife photography heaven. That combined with the beautiful sensor on this thing, it's low light capabilities, using it with something like my 800 F11, which a lot of people have bashed, but nobody's used. So don't bash it until you've tried it. I made a huge review on that. I am absolutely loving that lens, especially with the R6. It's absolutely incredible. It's the cheapest, fastest, most amazing way to get to 800 millimeters on the R system. It's native, it is F11, and that sucks so hard so bad for so many things but on the r6 it is a beautiful lens especially in any sort of normal daylight conditions this r6 for wildlife can handle easily handle 6400 to 10,000 to 12,800 iso i've used i've gotten usable images from super high isos from this r6 for wildlife so that's my ultimate if i had to make this suggestion for you guys if price is not an option but price is a little bit of an option because obviously you can't afford the 45 megapixels in the R5. Number one recommendation, R6. Number two recommendation, used 5D Mark IV. Number three recommendation, 90D. And just because though, this is where it gets a little weird and conflicty, just because I say it in that order does not mean that I devalue the 90d because it is in my opinion probably the best aps-c camera camera that canon makes so it is the best crop camera out there and it is great for wildlife and if that's all you can afford then don't even be sad about that because you can still do a lot of great things with that i am just ranking them based on this question and based on my thoughts and my experiences so that's it i know that was longer than i anticipated my time lapse is way beyond done now. So I'm gonna wrap it up. If you guys have any questions about anything that I went over. Oh, the last thing too, the burst mode on the R6. The burst mode on the 5D4 is good. The burst mode on the 90D is good. It's actually better than the 5D4. So there's that, but the burst mode on the R6, come on, you can't touch that. You know, 12 frames a second, mechanical, 20 frames a second, electronic. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. It's so, so good. And then of course the R6 also has better dynamic range. The 5D4 definitely has better dynamic range than the 90D, so we're cascading this again. That's another reason why you're seeing my opinion stated the way it is in terms of R6, 5D4, 90D. Those are just my thoughts. If you guys have any questions about any of that, anything that I forgot to mention concerning the cameras, leave those in the comments below and you know I'll answer them. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got new videos every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So I let that go for like nine minutes longer than I had anticipated. That was me talking. <laughs> All right, second breakfast time.